business. One, two, three. Small business. Okay, so as you can tell, we're a very eclectic group. Uh, we're having this press conference for a very specific reason. As you can tell, we have our big box store here, which was taken just the other day, which is one of the biggest fears of small business. Online shopping, another big fear of a small business. We have to now retrain the mindset that unfortunately the COVID illness has now created. So based on that, we have business owners here we also have our chamber presidents from surrounding areas and our elected officials who are all here in solidarity to please tell our governor one size does not fit all. So one size doesn't fit all. Big box stores do not know their customers' names. They don't know their illnesses. They don't know what's required, the one-to-one -one shopping, the one-to-one -one professional services, the one-to-one -one spas, hairdressing. We all know our customers by name here in Sayville and West Sayville, Bayport, Blue Point, Ronkonkoma. We, Holbrook, I'm trying to see who else do I have, Farmingville, Ronkonkoma, all these surrounding areas, Middle Island, Middle Country, Patchogue, we really need to get the word out. We are ready for business. We ourselves have started a task force amongst the chambers, our town officials, Jim O'Connor, Alexis Wright, Mary Kate Mullen. They have jumped on board to help us establish our task force for reopening. We have to reopen now. We are on the brink of bankruptcy. We have some of our restaurants who want to do outdoor dining with social distancing practices. I'm going to bring them up first because they're the reason why I'm standing here as the Greater Sable Chamber of Commerce President. I never thought I would see this in my day. I don't want anybody to think that this press conference is undermining or underestimating the seriousness of the COVID illness. We have all lost a loved one. We have all been affected. That is not our reason for being here today. Our reason for being here is to show you these are the kits that we are going to be giving out. These are the things that we're going to require. These are all the reasons why we're standing here today. We want our customers, all our friends who come in from other towns to visit us, we want them to know they're safe here. They're safe here, we will collect gloves when they come in and give them fresh gloves. We will put masks on them. We will require hand sanitizer. We are going to also give them from the Greater Sable Relief Fund any funding that they need to open safely. We are asking for that outdoor dining very quickly. So on that note, I want to bring up two of our restaurant owners that are here today. I have, there we go, James Caparuccio from Cafe Joel, and I also have Chuck Tabara from the Sable Inn. They want to say a word or two about what they're willing to put into place. Thank you very much, Eileen. Before you stop, can you just say your first and last name and title spell it? Chuck Cabrera, uh, last name C-A-B-R-E-R-A, -R -R from the Sable Inn. Thank you. Uh, proud to be a small business owner here in Sable. I would uh, first like to thank all the frontline workers, especially my niece Kim Davis down in Richmond, Virginia. Um, as far as the restaurants are concerned, uh, it would be greatly helpful if we could start with the outside seating. If we receive the guidelines, we will follow them, and it would be good for everybody in the community to bring back some normalcy. And we know we could do it. We will follow the guidelines given to us by the governor and all local officials. And that's pretty much it. How are you? I'm James Caparuccio from uh, Cafe Joel. I'm the owner over there. Um, again, we, we really just really wanted to reiterate that 
we, we really need uh, the outdoor guidelines just, just for a little bit of normalcy. Um, we're, we're in phase three and we're doing everything the right way now. Um, our whole community is and uh, we're banding together and that's why all these people are standing here together today. Um, we, we create a, a contact list uh, delivery and, and we're doing our best for what we're doing right now. But, but we need a little more. Um, and, and raising these outdoor guidelines would be a key, a key part of that. And uh, we look forward to continuing to do it uh, the best way we can and uh, the most appropriate way we can with keeping social distancing, um, making sure everyone has hand sanitizers, single use utensils, single use uh, drinks. Um, we'll do whatever it is, we just need the guidelines. Thank you. Also, we have some retail businesses that are willing to do the curbside pickup. They already have their plans in place for safety. Uh, that being said, I would like to bring up from the Sable Chocolatier or Deborah Canavan, whoever would like to speak. Come on up, or Tara. Come on, it's me. Hi, my name is Kate Barg from the Sable Chocolatier. Um, what we've implemented is my father has made a customized door for our front door. So we open our door, we have a wood frame with a little slider door, and that way we can do a curbside pickup. They can either order through the window, order on Facebook, or they can call us directly on the phone and we can just pass it right through the screen door. We have Kate Cameron from Kate Cameron Jewelers. We have Bill Letts from his furniture store, Mark Williams. We have Michelle from the Island Salt and Spa, Dominique from Vintage Bo Boutique, Paper Doll Vintage Boutique across the street. We have running stores. They are all willing, each and every one of them, to do whatever it takes, but we have to tell the governor right now, one size does not fit all. We could do it better than this, without a doubt. We feel each one of us here are truly, truly essential in every way, shape, and form. They all offer services and goods and professional services that we feel are needed in our town and our community to thrive. We have to turn a profit and we have to turn it quickly. We're ready to go. We need to go. Um, I want to also bring up and thank Councilman Jim O'Connor, Alexis White, Mary Kate Mullen, Councilwoman uh, Mary Kate Mullen, Steve Flatterin, Steve Flatterin, come on up, Anthony Piccarello, our county legislator, Adina Biedenberger is from Senator Martinez, Monica Martinez's office, so she's represented here. We have everybody here. We have Andrew Garbarino, I think came downstairs, our assemblyman. And these are our chamber presidents from surrounding areas. And Doug Smith is here from another neighboring. <laughs> from, you know, it's funny because all of them have jumped in and they've all said, we support Sabo, we support Small Village, we support Main Street. They are all here for us, they all came for us. So we need them, we need them in our corner. They're willing to fight for us to get up and going. And then I'm just going to turn over to our chamber presidents that are here today. Introduce yourself. Good, a good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lenore Paparaki. I am the president of the Greater Middle Country Chamber of Commerce. We service Selden, Center Reach, Lake Grove, and the greater surrounding areas. And I am here today representing my entire chamber to show that there's solidarity between all the chambers in Suffolk County. We're here because we don't feel one, one size does fit all, and we're making sure that the governor hears our play. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Kevin Himes, H-Y-M-S. I am the new chamber president of the Ronkonkoma Chamber of Commerce, representing the areas of Ronkonkoma, Lake Ronkonkoma, and Bohemia. We're in both townships of Brookhaven and Islip. So I work extensively with both townships, 
along with the county and our state representatives. So, like everyone else, we're here in solidarity together, and we need to support our local businesses, and buy local, that's our slogan, buy local, help support our local businesses and the economy, and we're all in this together to reopen in a very safe and responsible manner. Thank you. Hello, my name is Michael Wentz. I'm the founding president of the Farmingville Hills Chamber of Commerce. We created the chamber back in 2011. Um, we are all small business owners. We've opened our business the legal way. We followed the procedures that were given to us. We followed the policies and the rules and the laws. We've been following these rules for years. We understand completely what it is to safely operate our business with the best intent for our customers, for our family, for our livelihood. Okay, we want to open. We want to do everything the right way. So with the, with, the, with the best giving guidelines to us to immediately allow us to open up, thank you very much. Just so you know who you're speaking with. This is Carol Seitz of the Bayport Blue Point Chamber of Commerce, also running a family-owned business, Thermatrol Incorporated in Blue Point. I have the privilege of working with Islip Town and Brookhaven Town as Eileen is on her Islip Town task force doing a lot of work. I'm on the Brookhaven Town task force and then Eileen and I meet behind the scenes and make sure we share all the information so there's congruency and there is solidarity. In fact, in our chamber, I'm letting anybody advertise on our websites. You don't have to be a member if you're a business in our areas to survive. We want you open and for work. Square footage should be the accommodation for businesses to open. Square footage per business and the owners are taught what to do. So not being allowed to be open is not fair. Square footage per size so that every shop can open and make a living and stay well. Because right now, if we don't do this, Governor Cuomo, you're going to lose a lot of businesses in Suffolk County. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Rick Amorati, A-M-M-I-R-A-T-I, -I, representing for over 21 years the Holbrook Chamber of Commerce as their president. I'm so happy to be here today. I want to thank Eileen and the Greater Sable Chamber for putting this together. This is absolutely one of the most beautiful, pic picturesque towns in any town in USA. So an applause for Sable that needs to get open. Now, real quick, we live in a world of acronyms today, right? Everybody knows LOL, F out loud, DIY, do it yourself. And does anybody know what MYOB means? Mind your own business, exactly. And I think that should be the name of this campaign, Mind Your Own Business, because every business owner that I talk to is definitely a DIY type of person. They all want to do it themselves, right? Do it yourself. We've got to get these businesses open, and I think MYOB definitely applies here, because I don't know any businesses here that don't want to mind their own business, get themselves open, and let's get, this, get things moving around. So I thank you for your time, and God bless Sable Chamber and all my sister chambers. Thank you. As he's mentioned, do it yourself. So I do want to give a shout out to Sandra from Hammer and Stain, who's kept every child in Savo busy with her do-it-yourself kits. So I want to give her a shout out. I have to thank Elaine Piotrowski. She is our ice cream lady at every single one of our events. Even our vendors now have heard. All of our events for a Savo Chamber of Commerce have been canceled. That's how some of our people really subsidize their living, so even food vendors, every, everybody has been afflicted by this. So I, I do want to also wrap up by introducing our two assemblymen from the 5th and 8th District, Doug Smith, Andrew Garbarino, come on down. And I want to introduce them because they have been nothing but supportive and our New York State County Legislator for our area, Anthony Piccarello, the first person I said can I do a press conference? He said, absolutely. So I have to say, I have had nothing but good support. It's been one of the hardest years to be a chamber president, but I'm gonna help these businesses get through, Steve Flattering, everybody. I cannot tell you what it takes. I say it takes a Sado village, and that's what it's gonna take. We're gonna open. Like Carol said, one size does not fit all. We're willing to go, we're ready to rumble, we're gonna rock this and we're gonna open and we're gonna save every single business in this town. Thank, thank you, Eileen. Uh, Assemblyman Andrew Garbarino from the 7th Assembly District. 
I grew up here in Sable. This is my hometown. I'm third generation. My grandfather and father both had small businesses. Small business is the backbone of New York State. They employ most of the uh, employees. I think we need to get away from what is essential and non-essential. That's not the right term to be using now. You ask any small business owner whether they're essential or non-essential, if they can't pay their mortgage, if they can't feed their family, then they're definitely, they need to be termed essential. All small business is essential. We now need to go from essential versus non-essential as to whether or not a business can open safely. We're in unprecedented times here. If we can open a business safely, if somebody can shop at Stop and Shop, if somebody can shop at Home Depot, if somebody can shop at Target safely, then they can shop at Deborah Canavan. They can shop at the same Running Place. You heard from the owner of the Sable Inn before. That, the Sable Inn has been open for over a century. Teddy Roosevelt used to go there and, 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 and drink when he would come out here. That business needs to be able to reopen now. If it can be done safely, they should be able to do it. That is what we, we're here today. We're asking the governor's office. They've been, they've been moving on certain things. We need them to move a little quicker so we can get people back to work here, so people can start uh, uh, paying their employees, they can start paying themselves, they can, and they can be able to survive. Because right now, we don't know who's going to be able to come back from this. And I want to thank the chambers and everybody else for coming today to put this together, because this is a very important message. Thank you very much. New York State Assemblyman Doug Smith here. I, my district uh, is just to the north of here. I'm so happy to be joined by every single one of my Chamber of Commerce presidents up to the north in Brookhaven and the town of Islip. Uh, today we have represented here over 1,000 small businesses. These are businesses that need action today. They are having a tough time holding on. They can operate safely. We've trusted them to do this so far. Uh, right now, 50% of New Yorkers work for a small business. That is incredible, and 95% of the businesses across the state of New York are considered small businesses. We need to get back to business. The governor talks about reopening phase one on Long Island here tomorrow. The problem is that still is one month until we can get back into restaurant operation. We need, and I believe this strongly, one size does not fit all, as Eileen said. We need to trust our towns and counties. The town of Islip, the town of Brookhaven and Suffolk County can work with the, their local businesses to put things right. The fact is, 200 miles away in a state capital, they don't understand what's happening here on Main Street in Sayville. We need to trust our local governments, our local business owners, and they've done so much to flatten the curve and protect our families. We need to keep trusting them. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Suffolk County Legislator Anthony Piccirillo, P-I-C-C-I-R-I-L-O-L. -L. I think the theme here today is that we can do it better. Small businesses understand how to cater to their patrons, they understand how many people could be in their store at one time. We're here to offer them the proper PPE to keep them safe while they're able to turn a profit. And that's the whole thing about small business. They need to be able to turn a profit to pay their bills and to hire people here locally. Right now, we have 36 million Americans unemployed, and that's unsustainable for the future of not only Sable, but the entire country. Um, I just want to thank the Chamber Presidents. I want to thank all of our elected officials that are here today. And I just want to say we need to get back to work in a safe manner to save our main streets all through Suffolk County. Thank you very much. I would like to bring Steve Flatterman. Come on, Steve. Steve is also one of our elected officials who has actually previously been in Sable. So I would love for him to speak as well. Thank you. I'm Legislator Steve Flatterman from the 11th Legislative District, last name F-L-O-T-T-E-R-O-N. Again, as everybody really said before, small businesses are the backbone of our economy. Again, if box stores and a liquor store could do things safely, I'm sure right behind me the general store could do things safely and probably do a better job at it. We've all been to the supermarkets or the box stores where the mayhem and some of them are not being managed. Again, I do trust our small businesses to do the right thing. And again, we gotta get back to work. We're gonna have worse problem in the future when people aren't able to pay their bills and they suffer from other illnesses such as depression and everything else. We need to get them back to work, the field uh, for our economy, for their families, and again, they are the backbone. Again, let's open up. And my councilman, Jim O'Connor, and Kate Mullen, councilwoman Kate Mullen, they have been also a backbone when I reached out and said, I need help. I need help 
I'm getting phone calls from everybody. I need assistance. I consider myself a dynamo, but not during a, di a, a, a pandemic like this. So that dy dynamo was swirling down and they helped lifted me up. And I don't know what I would do without any of our council people, without Alexis White, also on the town board. I don't know what I would have done without them, so. Thank you, Eileen. Um, my name is Jim O'Connor. I'm from the town of Islip. I have a slightly unique perspective this afternoon. Uh, I'm also a small business owner. So 15 years ago, I jumped out of a plane without a parachute and decided to open up my own law firm. And folks who own small businesses know what it's like to go out there and to put a stake in the ground and to, to, to build something. And I've built it over 15 years, and I'll be damned if I'm going to let it go. I am not going to let go of this. I have built 15 years of my life into this. I put my family at stake. Every day as a small business owner, I pull out of the driveway and I realize I'm not just pulling out of the driveway for me and my family, but there are nine other families that depend on me to keep my business open, to keep my business running. So <clears throat> we have a, a slightly, I think I have a slightly unique perspective. I'm gonna, um, my business is, as an attorney and as attorneys, we're trained to speak in the alternative. I'm gonna do that. The problem with you do that is the folks who are listening only listen to their half of the message so try to listen to both halves of the message listen this was horrible what happened to us none of us asked for it and our leaders and our, our public leaders did a great job of educating us of telling us that we needed to stay home and we did everything did everything we could to flatten the curve and, and they even have a word for it they're calling it New York tough so if they trusted us to be New York tough and to do the right thing and be responsible and be safe to flatten the curve and to stay home they need to trust the, the ingenuity of the American small businessman to find a way through this struggle we can do it I've been saying it for, for weeks now we can do this we can be smarter we can be safer, we can be responsible, but we need to open, we need to move forward. And I think that's the message. Let's do it smartly, let's do it safely, let's do it responsibly, but I trust small business to get this right, and I think we can do it. So thank you, Eileen, and thank you to all my fellow small business owners. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mary Kate Mullen, Councilwoman for the Town of Islip, and I want to thank Eileen and everybody else who's here today, because we are all here because we love Sayville. And um, I know I, I speak for Jim and the rest of the town board members, whatever we can do to help you get open and succeed in the future, you have our support. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alexis Wyke and I am the receiver of taxes for Islip Town. And it's important that we get started. It's important that we trust these entrepreneurs who took a risk, opened a store and succeeded and now we have to trust that they're able and willing to open up and, and still handle what's in front of us because financially we can't extend taxes at this time and so we're going to need to do the other recourse which is to open up business and start making money again. We can't survive like this and it's important that we reopen and get moving. Is there anybody I'm forgetting? Okay, so what I have to say in closing is this. I thank Pam Raymond who's over there. Pam Raymond has been a long time resident as well as business owner here. If we can aspire to be Pam Raymond and build this town back up after this, then we've done our job. Kay Cameron is one of those phases, a jewelry store ready to open tomorrow, ready for curbside pickup. She's got everything in place for those graduation gifts. I want all the business members. I have Catbird, Catbird seat. Where is she? There's Deb. She's willing to do curbside pickup at any risk. She has an art gallery in there. So what I'm basically trying to say is I want all my business owners to raise your hand. J.D. Chandlery, Donna Kirk. And all these people are the reason why I'm here. 
They'll, re they'll be the reason that this town carries on. I'm eternally grateful to the media that are here today, every one of you. You took me last second, you realized my urgency, and my urgency was real. So I thank everybody who's here today, our elected officials, our business owners, and like I said, we need to get back to work. One size doesn't fit all. We could do it better, absolutely way better than this. Way better, way better than Home Depot. Sorry to tell you, we have Brinkman Hardware. He doesn't allow anybody in that store without a mask, no matter what you need. Mask, no entry, no, no mask, no entry. Okay, and yes, we are going to use hand sanitizer after using this microphone. We have it right there on the table. But I just want to thank everybody who's here today. And please, if you can spread the word, Sable's ready. We're ready to open. We're ready to go. Yeah. Quick question, sure. Eileen. Just a few minutes ago, according to the media reports, the governor has said Long Island can begin phase one beginning tomorrow. All right, phase one tomorrow. Does that, <laughs> does that give you hope now? That gives us lots of hope. And we're ready to do it. We're ready to do it. You know, Andrew, from Channel 12 News, we're ready to do it. He said, Governor Cuomo said, phase one tomorrow, we passed it. And we'll pass it with flying colors here. So once again, I'm gonna have everybody else shop small, as corny as that is, that's why we love our village. So everybody on the count of three, we're gonna close one, two, three. Shop small. Thank you, everyone. Oh, by the way, for printing needs, we have Ron Trotter, my vice president. Give a hand. Ron Trotter.